We have gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear people of God, today is the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Yea, yeah. we've gathered as a people of God to thank him for his love, to thank him for his mercy, to thank him for his kindness, to thank him for all he has been to us, to our families, and to bring before him our needs, our worries, our challenges, our fears, anxieties, and our difficulties, trusting in his love. And so, my dear people of God, to prepare ourselves for this celebration, let us call to mind our sins, be sincerely sorry for them, and ask God for pardon. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of God, the Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting Let us pray. O God, who manifests your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make us those hastening to attain your promises as to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. 
the word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. You object. What the Lord does is unjust. Listen, you house of Israel. Is what I do unjust? Is it not what you want to do that is unjust? When the upright man renounces his integrity to commit sin and dies because of this, he dies because of the evil that he himself has committed. When the sinner renounces sin to become law-abiding and honest, he deserves to live. He has chosen to renounce all his previous sins. He shall certainly live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. If our life in Christ means anything to you, if love can persuade at all, or the spirits that we have in common, or any tenderness and sympathy, then be united in your convictions and united in your love with a common purpose and a common mind. That is the one thing which will make me completely happy. There must be no competition amongst you, no conceit, but everybody is to be self-effacing. Always consider the other person to be better than yourself so that nobody thinks of his own interests first but everybody thinks of other people's interests instead. In your minds, 
you must be the same as Christ Jesus. His state was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on the cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all things in heaven, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He went and said to the first, My boy, you go and work in the vineyards today. He answered, I will not go. But afterwards, thought better of it and went. The man then went and said the same thing to the second who answered, Certainly, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the father's will? The first, they said. Jesus said to them, I tell you solemnly, tax collectors and prostitutes are making their way into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you, a pattern of true righteousness, but you did not believe him. And yet, the tax collectors and prostitutes did. Even after seeing that, you refused to think better of it and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Holy Ghost, create. 
Glory be to Jesus. My dear people of God, when we were in secondary school, the school had a school farm. This farm was partitioned and entrusted to different classes. And those classes further partitioned the, the farm or their own portion of the farm and given to different groups. Members of the group went the extra mile to see their, their own portion of the farmland did well. Some contributed their resources, some their time, some their talent, just to ensure that their own portion of the farmland did well. In every class, in every group, there were those who did more of talking. Each time we went to work in the school farm, some of us did more of analyzing, more of talking, while a few did the work. But at the end of the day, every member of the class or every member of the group gets the same score. If a particular group does well, every member of that group will be scored well. If a particular class doesn't do well, it means every member of that class would not be scored well. My dear people of God, from the text of our gospel passage, we can authoritatively say that God is a farmer, the owner of a farmland. He has partitioned this farmland. Each and every one of us has his or our own portion. Every family have its own portion. Every society has its own portion. Every parish has its own portion. Are we conscious of that? Are we aware of the existence of that farmland? Are we aware of the reality of our own portion in that farmland? How much, how well, how committed are we to see that our own portion, our own part of the farmland does well? What is this farmland of God? What is the farmland of God? The farmland of God is nothing else other than the kingdom of God that is both realized and yet to be realized. The kingdom of God is both realized and yet to be fully realized. That kingdom of God is a church. That kingdom of God is a society. That kingdom of God is a community. That kingdom of God is your society in the parish, your parish community. That kingdom of God is your family. Are you aware of your own portion in your family? Are you aware of your own piece of land in your society? Are you aware of your own piece of land in your parish community? Can you fully, confidently say you have been cultivating your own piece of land? Can you? How have you been doing that? Is it with your time? Is it with your talent? Is it with your resources? Some of us are only good the way some of us were in analyzing, running commentaries. This is not working. This is not in place. This ought to be here. We have to move beyond the point of realizing that this is not in place. This ought to be here to the point of asking, how can this be fixed? What can be done to, to ensure that our own piece of the farmland is cultivated well? That is the message. 
are committed. Are you? To your family. How committed are you? To your society. How committed are you? In your parish. In the activities of the parish. To the growth of the parish. Are committed. St. Paul in our second reading tells us that to fully cultivate our own portion of the farmland, it requires a collective effort. Everybody has to be involved actively, not passively, not just by way of running commentary, doing something. That is why he says nobody should think of himself or herself alone. In our thinking, we must consider the other person. In our thinking, we must consider the other person. If we think we are too good, we are too big to do it, why should we think the other person is not too big, too good to do it? If we are too big, too good to actively participate in the work, our own portion of land, what makes us think that the other person is not too big, too good to cultivate it. Everybody has a role to play. Everybody must play his or her role. Every family has a role to play. Every society has a role to play. Otherwise, there won't be growth. Our own portion of the farmland, we're who die, who don't do well. We must, we must put our effort, concentrate our effort to see that it does well. As I said, in the secondary school, some were good only at drawing commentaries. It was a few for the most part, that saw to it that the portion of the farmlands that belong to their group or class does well. But everybody in that group will take the glory. The same today in our society, in our families, in our parishes. Some societies or some families are still standing only on account of the wife. Only on account of the wife. The husband does practically nothing to see that the family stands, to see that the family grows. Some solely because of the husband. Are the children aware that they have a role to play? Everybody has a role to play. Even when you come to the church, Sometimes, for the most part, the growth of a parish is to a reasonable extent courtesy of a few. Some just come in, a troop in, and we go out. Only a few see to the growth of it. Even in our establishment, our places of work, sometimes only a few see to the well-being, to the growth of the company. Some of us, we just walk in and we walk out. And those few are getting tired. They are asking, it's high time. We too, we took a bow. Yahweh is saying to us, he's saying to such persons in today's first reading, if you take a bow, your sacrifices, the effort you've done, you've put in all these years might be rubbish. The one who has been doing good, if he suddenly decides to start doing evil, he will die on account of his evil deeds. For those of us who have not been doing anything at all, Yahweh is saying to us in today's first reading, that if we start now, if it begin now, something positive 
can come out of it. He says in the first reading, for those who have been doing evil, if they decide to put an end to that and turn to a life of virtue, they will live on account of their decision. The point is, as we appreciate those of you who have done your best, who are doing your best to see that your own portion of the farmland of God doesn't die. We also encourage you to keep on the good work. It is not time to give up. Unless, unless we have gotten to the harvest time, to relent will be a disaster. For those of us, those of us who have been relaxing, those of us who have only been running commentaries, those of us who have merely been analyzing, it is time for us to begin doing something. We pray that God helps us in this regard through Christ our Lord. May we now rise and profess our faith.
through sorrow for sin requires a change of heart and attitude. Our prayers today include our will to live out what we believe. For a spirit of penitence in all members of the Catholic Church, we pray, O oh Lord. God For leaders who speak and act for the sake of others, we pray, O oh Lord. For men and women enmeshed in life of crime and vice, we pray, O oh Lord. For the mass intention, thanksgivings, and other remembrances requested for this mass earlier mentioned, and all other intentions placed in front of the altar, we pray, O oh Lord. an honest effort on our part to consider the other person first and for our private intentions let us talk to the Lord in the silence of our heart We pray, O oh Lord. We unite our prayers with those of the Blessed Virgin Mary as we say, Hail Mary, full Hail of grace, grace, the Lord grace is with you. Blessed, blessed are you amongst Lord. women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, hear the petitions of your daughters and sons who seek to do your will day by day, 
We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands, hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good, good of all his holy church. church. Amen. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it a wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them, them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, and as in exaltation, we acclaim. <laughs> Are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Yeah, Mr. 
carry your face. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Alfred, Adwali Martins, Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Thou, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed, by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our hearts, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign 
forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my, under my roof, but, but only say a word, and my, my soul, soul shall be healed. healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Prayer after Holy Communion. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Prayer for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. O oh God, our help in ages past, we, your children, humbly implore your mercy at this time of adversity.
we are devastated by the coronavirus pandemic that is ravaging the whole world, snuffing life out of your people and spreading fear everywhere. You are the God of life, and nothing is impossible to you. You ask us to call on you in the day of trouble, and you will answer us. We know that we are sinners who are unworthy of your favors. Although we have no merits of our own to plead before you, we stand on the merits of the death and resurrection of Christ and plead his saving blood over our lives and situation. We ask you to be merciful to us and save us from this scourge that is devastating the world. Be gracious to us and speak life and healing into the present coronavirus scourge and command it to depart from our world. Give leaders of governments and scientists divine wisdom and knowledge to take the right decisions and to discover the medication needed to cure people who are infected with this virus. Protect all health workers and volunteers. Look with pity on those who are already infected with this deadly virus and heal them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died from it and comfort those they left behind to mourn their demise. Lord, through this scourge, may the hearts of many be turned back to you, their creator. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray Amen. for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray Amen. for us. All angels and saints of God, pray for us. May Our Lady, Mother of the Church, the health of the sick, intercede for the whole world. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May we have our seat. Dearly beloved in Christ, there is something wonderful about our God. He who makes all things new gives us the chance for new beginnings. We thank God as the month of September draws to a close. And we have a new beginning with the month of October, the month dedicated to our Mother Mary. We shall be having our October devotions, as we mentioned last week, beginning from the 1st of October. We encourage us all to be part of the devotions every evening in the parish. Speaking of new beginnings, we are privileged to resume our weekday worship, so beginning Monday, we shall be having masses at the usual times. We, however, encourage all parishioners to remember to continue to observe all the necessary protocols. Let us not take anything for granted. Let us continue to keep safe and do all within our power to see to the end of this pandemic. May God help us to indeed see to the end of the pandemic through Christ our Lord. Amen. Speaking of new beginnings, we continue to pray for new beginnings for our country. We continue to pray that our country will know peace, that 
all men and women who desire to serve God will be able to serve God in freedom. So we continue to pray as directed by the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Nigeria for peace in our land, especially in Southern Kaduna. As our prayers draw to a close, we remind all that on the 1st of October, the 60th independence anniversary of our country, we have been asked to say the five sorrowful mysteries, praying that peace will return to our land that men and women of goodwill will freely worship God, that all the bloodshed that we have witnessed in the past will indeed be a thing of the past through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the words of our homeless, I want to thank all those who have continued to cultivate their portions of the land within the church. We want to thank all those who have continued to support the church in various ways, all those who have been working in little corners to see that things move on well within our parish. We thank all our liturgical ministers and the various societies and individuals that continue to support the parish at this point in time. Thank you very much. God bless you and God bless your families. We thank those of you who continue to participate from your homes watching this Mass on TV. We pray that through your own prayers, you will also bring about a fruitful cultivation of the portion of land God has entrusted to your care. It is also on that note that we want to thank those who are our collaborators, cultivating beautifully their own portion of the land the management and staff of R2 TV who make it possible for us to reach you every Sunday on Go TV channel 112. Thank you for bringing about a fruitful harvest. May God bless you. May God lead you to greater harvest, to be able to win souls for his kingdom. And may you in turn reap the fruit of your labor and may he continue to put smiles on your faces. This is our prayer for you through Christ our Lord. Amen. We conclude by thanking our homilies and chief celebrant, Reverend Father Richard Odok, OP. Thank you, Father. We thank our deacon, Reverend Matthew Achunine, and again, all the members of the liturgical groups that have participated at this Mass. God bless you all. God bless our parish, St. Dominic's, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you this day and forever remain with you. Amen. 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 Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.